Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Monday, August 15th, 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we are in an uptrend. Saw somebody refer to it more of a rebound, and I kind of like rebound since we're still under the 200-day moving average, but uh, we are for now going to stick with uh, stick with uptrend. Quite a strong rebound it's been. You can see over here on the trend gauge that leaders, our short-term signal, and our medium-term signal are all flashing bullish slash uptrend, meaning leaders, plenty of leaders to go around and acting well. You can make money in them in the market. That's the true tell of a bullish market is that there are leading growth stocks and they're going higher and resisting pullbacks. And we certainly have that. I actually have two full lists of 21 over 21 that could be considered leaders. Short term, we're extended above the 21-day exponential moving average. As you can see, this red stop sign that I put out here on Friday when we closed 4.8% above the 21-day on the S&P 500 medium term. Also bullish, all five major indexes tracking higher above their uptrending 50-day moving average. Long term, we got a third index with its first close above the 200-day moving average today. So we've got midterms, sorry, midterms. I'm not in college anymore. We've got mid caps, small caps, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average closing uh, over the 200-day moving average. We need to see a weekly close above to get this arrow to move off of bearish slash downtrend to neutral or to uptrend if we get uh, all five closing above. Even if we get them closing above, it certainly doesn't mean that we're out of the woods yet. I've seen a lot of people saying that we've never ret retraced 50% plus of a bear market and made new lows. Well, never, uh, never is a strange word in the markets. You see a lot of nevers happening for the first time ever. So I'm not going to say we're out of the woods yet. So what just happened today? Bulls don't care that I put a stop sign up. Uh, they're more like honey badgers. They just don't care. More honey badger than bulls as we continue higher. Uh, despite the fact that we're higher on the S&P, we're actually uh, less extended from the 21-day. Close 4.8% above on Friday, 4.7% above today, despite a 0.4% up move. Our G6 uh, proxy of growth ETFs up 0.23%. NASDAQ 100 up 8 tenths of a percent, Dow up a half percent, mid caps up 0.15, Russell up 0.2, Global Diversified 6040 stock bond up 0.12. Uh, foreign stocks and emerging markets actually closed lower on the day. U.S. was for the most part the, the global leader. That's why 6040 is uh, so low today. Protection up approximately 0.23%. We'll get to the tail of the tape and we'll get to a discussion of the indexes and then charts of interest. But first, let me try to explain what we do here at Revere. We are trend followers, means when we look for the ideal setup in the market is when this black line, the long term 200 day moving average, this red line, the 50 day intermediate term moving average, and this green line, the short term. 21 day exponential moving average. When the indexes are trending higher above that, that's our ideal setup. That's when we uh, have the most, our most money in the market. When things start to roll over and consolidate sideways, our stops are going to get hit. So that's going to be taking us out of the market. Our stops will get hit. We'll wait for uh, the new trend to clarify itself. Sometimes it resolves higher, as it did briefly at the end of December. But then sometimes it rolls over as it did in the beginning to the middle of January. And when it rolls over hard, this is when we're starting to get out of the way. When we get under the 200-day moving average, the heavy black line, that's when we are at our maximum defensive position. And why are we at our maximum defensive position? We'll let this chart answer that question. So here's the last 13 bear markets. One, one thing they have all in common, they reached bear status when they're below the 200-day moving average on a weekly closing basis. Sometimes they're just mild bear markets down around 
you still need a 25 or so percent recovery to come back to even after you lose 20 percent sometimes they go lower sometimes they go a lot lower um the most severe let's call it a 30 percent or more loss there's been six of them since 1968 the average loss 44 and a half percent you need an 80 percent gain on the indexes to get back to even after losing 44 percent off the top so we think that when you're under the 200 day moving average you best get out of the way until you let your short-term indicators get you back in little by little then you get back above your medium term indicator you can dip a couple more toes in and then just ride it higher which is what we've been doing since we re-entered here on July 15th we don't know how, you never know it's like catching a wave you never know how good of a wave it's going to be you never know how far it's going to take you but we're going to ride it now we're coming into this key area here this declining 200 day moving average the dow's gotten above it i mentioned mid caps and small caps have gotten above nasdaq 100 and the s p have not and that's where we place most of our weight when we get back above it back test it meaning get above pull back and it holds and then make a higher high that gives us much more confidence uh, that we may be in a uh, more sustainable rally, but we are, as I said, ridiculously extended. You can see here 4.7% from the 21 day exponential moving average coming into this area. Uh, we're, I feel, I'm, I'm quite content that we've gotten our longs in place, uh, making money on them, uh, over 20% up on our SSO position that we first entered with this first close above the 21 here, letting that ride. We're ready for the pullback. We're gonna see how leaders act when we pull back. We go up and above, we'll put a hedge on or increase the hedge that we have. We still have a 5% QID hedge in place and uh, we'll see how far the pullback goes. Maybe we go sideways, you can correct via time, via price or via both. Maybe we go sideways and let the indexes catch up. Uh, maybe we see a harsh pull off. I'm not going to get a uh, harsh uh, pullback. I'm not going to guess either way, but I do know extended this far. We're not piling into a bunch more longs. So that's what we do here at Revere. And if you're interested in learning more about this approach, email me Donna Revere asset .com, or phone 855 real wealth. That's 855-732-5932. I think that little primer I just did is a good summary of how we handle the markets how we handle client accounts I also want you to know that the partners me and danny stewart have all of our family money and retirement funds in our portfolios primarily growtection as that is our flagship that's the bet gives you the best risk reward and uh, we get the same prices the same stocks the same buys the same sells that you do at the exact same prices so we put our money where our mouth is how many advisors do that i don't know uh, ask them though if they're in the same thing that you're in if not why aren't they Nasdaq 100 here also extended from its 21 by 5.7 percent uh, this is more volatile index so usually about 20 percent more volatile so not a surprise that it's 20 percent more extended but again coming into the downtrending 50-day moving average here this is where the rubber will meet the road let's go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average now and you can see uh this close barely above a couple ticks but it's above the 200 day moving average you could arguably say it just closed right on it uh note the lack of relative strength in the dow i point that out when we're trending higher that's very typical uh, of what you expect to see in a strong market because the dow is a more defensive index now mid caps mdy second close above the 200 day moving average small caps iwm second close above the 200 day moving average note the slope of the 200 is declining on all five of the indexes so you could actually theoretically continue to trickle lower and stay above the 200 while you're losing money so really we need to see this flatten out and turn up uh, to have the best of all worlds. So those are our five major indexes. How about some individual stocks that stood out today? Tesla had a pretty good day getting back above the 200 day moving average here below average volume, however, but um, coming up to the highs of the last couple of weeks. In fact, let me set an alert right above today's high 939.40 i'm more looking for a pullback to the 200 day at 911 and see 
what happens there. Uh, but I want to know, I want to know pullbacks in the leaders. I want a pullback level and I want a breakout level. What else acted well today? Suave may be the strongest stock in the market. Day five higher high after an earnings gap up. Our position, we we bought it, extended with gap up 2%, haven't added um, just because it's just too extended. Um, but when you want to pull back and the market doesn't want to give you one, that's telling you something about the strength in this stock. We'll get into it more. It will pull back to the moving averages. Uh, we may actually end up entering it higher, but at a lower risk entry point. And I say lower risk because uh, it'll be closer to the moving averages when we do increase our uh, position in it. But very clearly, this is a leading stock. MPWR, our second largest position, uh, up 1.7% on the day. Really nice consolidation. I like the look of this here. Uh, any pullback should hold the 500 area tightening up, maybe a three weeks tight before we go higher. We'll be looking to add to that also uh, if we get some strength. Hopefully, though, we end up going sideways. Hope I know is not an, is not an investment plan, but uh, I have my preferences to what happens in the market. And right now with this being extended, it makes me hesitant to be adding uh, any significant long positions. What else uh, acted? outstanding today. Let's talk about what didn't act well. And for that, we'll go to the tail of the tape and I'll start breaking it down. No changes on uh, the headwinds there. Do you want to note the VIX was up today despite the fact that the markets were up? I think that means that uh, people are getting, getting a little concerned about how extended we are and they're putting some protection in place uh, for the pullback. A little bit of news today, the New York uh, Empire Manufacturing Index just absolutely terrible, down 31 versus a reading, expected reading of a positive five. Uh, when you start getting slowdowns like this, that's actually helping the Fed. They need the economy to slow down to bring inflation down. Also, China, very weak economic data. That's what was responsible for weak action in commodities overnight and throughout the day. In my notes here, I have it highlighted in red. What I mentioned, S&P extended 4.8%, now 4.8%. 7% above the 21-day exponential moving average. Mentioned the VIX being up along with the market strong. My expectation coming in today was bullish or sideways action after the 810 breakout. Uh, good action, certainly considering how extended we are above the 21. From, from an emotion standpoint, I want to exercise patience with my holdings. If this is going to be a good run in the market, I don't want to get sold out uh, on a pullback. Support and resistance coming into today. We touched our one here, this 4,300 level uh, on the S&P. Basically, that's right where we closed on the NASDAQ 100, undercut and reclaimed this 330 area. So we touched it several times, got back above it. Um, sectors that were strong today, bonds up across the board. The dollar, which has been acting inverse uh, to the index is now up two days in a row with the market up two days in a row. So uh, no correlations are 100% uh, sacred and it, we're watching and expecting that uh, our expectation was the dollar in the indexes would move opposite, but they haven't for the last couple of days. Uh, but we, we are participating with our exposure. The strongest uh, sectors today were XLP and XLU, so staples and utilities. Biotech started out weak, but got strong. Oil's by far uh, the worst, and you can see all these are really commodity related uh, as far as what was down today. Fertilizers, PDBC, metals, gold and gold stocks, and uh, international and emerging market stocks weak. Only portfolio change was to add to our LNG position. This is acting extremely well. Let me bring up LNG. Uh, you got your little bit of a handle, not long enough of a handle to form uh, on here because really this is a flat base, but you did get a flat base with a handle, then the breakout, three days up, pull back, all the way back to the ADMA today, and then buyers came in, and this is with a really bad day with red across the board on uh, oil stocks. And uh, let's take a look at a five minute on this. You can see the gap down a little bit lower and then just strength coming into it. 
Uh, we added to our position today in this, it's now a 6% plus position, our largest position. That's LNG adjusted beta 1.16, which in theory, never perfect in practice unless you own the index. We are 16% more exposure than the S&P 500 or more. Um, our portfolio theoretically should go up 1.16% if the uh, S&P was up 1%. That's what that's getting at there. But bottom line for everybody, the bulls are in control despite being extended above the 21E. That's just the fact. We're ready not adding a bunch of longs. We already got our longs in place for the most part, still have about 28% cash, 26% now, and um, would love a pullback. Not that, not that the markets give you what you want, but we'd love a pullback to be able to add to some of these, some of these positions that we've got uh, small gains in that are uh, setting up at more reasonable entry points. That's going to wrap it for today. As always, like to hear from you. You can email me, donnaerveerasset.com or phone 855 real well. So wrapping up, a little bit of a shorter video today, uh, but not a lot has changed. Wrapping up uh, Monday, August 15th, this is Don Vandenborg telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.